Welcome, LA Progressive friends and family and readers. Today, I'm really, really excited to have with me Dominique De Prima, and I'm Sharon Kyle of the LA Progressive. And Dominique is a radio personality, a producer, and activist in Los Angeles, and her work focuses on issues concerning African American communities. Since 2005, she has hosted the Front Page, which is a morning was a morning show on Radio Free 102.3 KJLH. She was a host and producer on the talk show Street Science with Dominic De Prima for almost nine years on 100.3 FM The Beat. She won the LA Weekly Best of LA Award, Award for her work on Street Science. She's a Gracie Award from the American w Women in Radio and Television Award winner. She's the winner of five Emmy Awards, six Parent Choice Awards, and Ollie on the SAG AFTRA American Scene Award for Positive Portrayals of Women, the Disabled, Senior Citizens, and People of Color. Man, I have known Dominique for many, many years. I didn't know all of this stuff. So I would say she is also a very humble person because she never shared any of this with me. I only found out about this because I'm looking it up because I'm interviewing her today. Welcome, Dominique. Thank you, Sharon. I, I really appreciate it. I always say I sound good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> good and you look good. You've been doing some really, really seriously great work. And now you're on KBLA. So yes. go ahead, talk to us. Well, no, KBLA. Uh, KBLA launched on uh, Juneteenth of 2021. Was, so we're coming up on three years now. The first uh, black owned talk radio outlet uh, west of the Mississippi. So, Wow, that's amazing. So before we press the record button, I was telling you that I just wanted to spend about 15 minutes talking about your career, what you've done, the impact you think you may or may not be having, um, you know, you and I may have shared experience about that, wondering about impact. How do you feel about that? Well, you don't know. I mean, I one um, thing that I am really grateful for is that I meet young women, particularly young Black women, many in Los Angeles, who have sort of grown up listening to me um, talk back, talk smack, and talk facts on the radio, and they are emboldened by that. So I'm very grateful for that uh, on their podcasts and their radio journeys. It's hard to know what impact you're having, but I feel like uh, the challenge is just to be consistent and stay in the space and, and try to make an impact over time. Yeah. Now, for most of your career, maybe even for all of your career, um, as a ra radio personality, you've been really reporting on current events, the news, informing uh, the public. As a reporter, would you say that the times have seriously changed over your reporting, um, the years that you've been reporting? Yeah, I mean, I think the standard that we used to have and to some extent that we used to pretend to have has broken down. The um, distinction between news and entertainment has all but disappeared. I somewhat credit uh, the former president, uh, Donald Trump, for that because he's really an entertainer and a reality show guy who's also a former president. Um, and also Fox News, the Fox News phenomena of opinion disguised as news. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm an activist. I speak my mind, I advocate for certain positions, but I'm clear about that. I don't try to pretend that I'm not giving you my opinion uh, like they do um, in many media outlets. So I think that's one big change um, as far as, you know, reporting. And then you've got the internet, so there's endless information available and people have varying degrees of abilities to filter that or process it. Late, well, you mentioned uh, <laughs> former president. <laughs> so since the former president has been on the scene, I personally, as a Black woman, have felt that his presence and the fact that so many people would vote for him is a real indicator that this country isn't necessarily a safe place for people of color. We're immigrants, 
for black and brown people. And lately, um, it feels like this is increasing the problems between races is beginning to feel dangerous. Do you get the sense? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what role can we play as those who are involved in the media? What role can we play to make things a little bit better, to inform people to, how do you see your role in helping to mitigate what looks like it's right on the horizon. Well, I mean, this pl this country has never been a safe place for black people, for people of color. I think it's been less bald faced. I think the fact that um, the former president just emboldened the white supremacists um, and the hate flock makes it feel more imminent, the danger. And also because we have not just the rise of fascism in this country, but a global increase in fascist governance and leadership um, disguised as populism, it all feels less safe. For me, our role as journalists, the way that we can help is number one, to call it out like you just did. Number two, to call a lie a lie instead of you know tiptoeing around. And also, I really think we have to play a role in teaching media literacy. This may not have been something so necessary before, maybe it was, but I think it's super crucial now with the onslaught of information that's coming to us from social media. And it's not just for kids, it's for elders too. I have elders all the time telling me about something they got in their inbox, which has them very alarmed, which turns out to be a fake or an AI thing or something. So we have to teach people to follow the money, to consider the source, to understand what they're reading and seeing and to be able to um, tease out the opinion from the actual data. And doing that day in, day out as journalists and doing it as part of the process of our reporting and our opining is going to be essential and more and more essential with the rise of AI, I think. Um, this makes us safer because the more well-informed people are, the less likely they are to be caught up in a QAnon or a Proud Boys or a fascism disguised as populism type of net. Right, right. Well, I'd like to commend you um, for the efforts that you've been involved in in creating coalitions, media coalitions. Um, those of us that are involved in independent media, we know that our voices are so easily drowned out. But if we work with, it, with each other, if we share each other's information, that helps with the algorithm that uh, Google and other search engines use to determine what should show up when people are searching for information. It's a great so point. I think that we have to post each other. We have to tweet each other and retweet each other. You do a lot of that too, and it's much appreciated. I see you uh, retweeting and reposting KBLA. Of course, the LA Progressive posts thinkers from all walks of life all around the world and amplifies their voices. And that's part of what you're talking about. It's part of you know, outsmarting the algorithm and slaying the the technical uh, dragons, which are really sort of these massive monopolies of information uh, that have a huge say in what we see and what we don't see online, what we know and what we don't know. So talk to us a little bit about your show on KBLA, First Things First. <laughs> when does it come on? What What kind of coverage is do you offer? Well, my show is um, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time, weekday mornings. And one of the reasons that I left KJLH and my long-term uh, partnership with Stevie Wonder to work with Tavis Smiley is because he offered me the opportunity to become the first Black woman in Southern California to ever host a talk radio show on a commercial station solo. That was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. You'll get news, you'll get opinion, you'll get fellowship. I take phone calls. I feature um, authors, uh, politicians, artists, and also, um, you know, opinion. Uh, we, we agree to disagree, we fight, we fellowship, we do all of that. And I think it is important, not just my show, but all of KBLA because if you think about it, there are thousands of talk radio outlets across the country shaping people's opinions about politicians, issues, elections, 
And all, almost all of them are owned by white folks and have an extremely conservative bent, right? White folks are not white folks. Outside of the Pacifica chain, in the commercial space, there are only five black owned talk radio stations in the whole country. And most of those stations are very, very, very slanted uh, to the aggressive conservative side. So uh, again, back to your point, we have to support each other um, and do the work. My dad, um, the late Amiri Baraka, um, AKA Leroy Jones, who actually passed away 10 years ago today, was just a big advocate of me being on the radio for some reason. He never really gave me his opinions or tried to influence me about you know, my career or whatever. But when it came to radio, he just wanted me there. And um, I think that's one reason why, because those of us who are on the airwaves day in, day out, help shape the way people think about things, give them access to different scholars, different um, sources of information. And that can really help uh, to sort of build a progressive core, or at least an intellectual core um, within different spaces that can protect us against all kinds of shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, um, I was just watching um, some people being interviewed. You know how they they sort of do like a man on the street kind of interview, and people were asking, um, um, well, well, the reporters were asking Trump supporters, why do they support him? And he is almost reaching a level where they have, they are deifying him I mean, they're yeah. comparing him to Jesus. Uh, really breaks my heart. <laughs> Speaking of my heart being broken, you keep your spirits up considering that your nose is in the news all the time, just like mine. <laughs> you have to keep that smile on your face. Well, I, I believe in focusing on what we want, not what we don't want. I believe, uh, was it Che Guevara who said, you know, a true revolutionary is guided by love. I feel like um, optimism is a characteristic of progressives. And so I cultivate that in myself. Um, I meditate, I work out, I go out of my way to find stories that remind us of our victories because there are, are many victories, but they're not featured in the mainstream New. So we have to feed ourselves that information um, and really savor those victories. And I do my best not to get caught up in the doom and gloom loop because that doom and gloom loop is very profitable. Like if I would get on the air and say, you know, black people are going to hell in a handbasket and we're all going to die, and I would be much more popular than I am. But that's a trap for me. And so it's important, not just for as a journalist, but as a human being to stay focused on what we want, not what we don't want, to take note of the victories, to stay encouraged, and to remember that no matter how many setbacks we have today, we are in the big picture, we are making incredible progress and we will continue to do so. Wow, that's good, that's good. Well, the last question I wanna ask you is, I want you to talk to me about what, um, what led you to be where you are and um, you know what, what your first opportunity to be a radio personality, how did that happen? And what advice would you give to a young person um, who is the age that you were when you got involved? Um, well, I, you know, I started in theater. I was a theater arts major at San Francisco State University, and I was always involved in agit prop theater and activism. From there, I was seen by a television producer, actually John Fromer, who was a labor activist and um, actually a member of the Communist Party, believe it or not, who worked for NBC. He hired me, he had me come in and he hired me to work on a show called Home Turf uh, on the NBC affiliate there. And from there, I started doing radio appearances to promote the show. That led to me getting my own radio show when I moved to LA and had no job. Those contacts from the Bay Area led me to my first radio show, which was Street Science, which is something I actually developed for television, but adapted for radio when the opportunity came and loved radio. From the minute I tried it, I just loved it. It's so direct, unfiltered, and uh, so creative. I love, love, love radio. Um, and, you know, I was blessed to be trained in media, uh, not just at San Francisco State University, but by this core of progressive um, 
excellent media folks at KRON TV, and even some that weren't progressive. My my cameraman Dick Williams, may he rest in peace, tall white guy, clearly a Republican, but he loved me because I would do the work. I would show up ready, and so he always did his best to teach me. So, been very blessed. The advice that I would give to uh, young people, teenagers, yeah, I've been doing this a long time, who get involved is or, or who want to be involved is to take every single opportunity. Now, especially if you're uh, black or uh, Latino, Arab American, indigenous, the folks that you don't see as much, you've gotta do internships and many of them don't pay. But the big excuse that people make is, well, we don't know anyone. We couldn't find anyone for, for the job. So if you go in and you do those internships, now they know you. And uh, many times that breaks down the walls of fear and resistance and you can find your way into a major media organization or a small one. Um, you know, do the internships, but also don't be afraid to do your own thing. I mean, young people today do that. There's podcasts and YouTube and all this stuff. Um, do that. Do it. You know, read the phone book. Learn the craft. Don't just be like, oh, hook me up, hook me up. Like, do the work um, and stay connected you know, to community. I'm assuming you're progressive probably. Oh, of uh, course. <laughs> so do the work. Like people talk about selling out as if that's some, you know, pathway to ease and comfort. But the reality is your security, your solidity, your um, base has to be strong. And, you know, the people that so-called cross over and sell out, they, they have one bump in the road and they're they're thrown away like trash. Those of us who are dedicated to a certain uh, set of values, we always have a network of folks that we are connected to on principle, you know, not just on convenience, not just on opportunism, but on principle. And there is just uh, nothing stronger than that. Wow. Yep. You're right about that. Um, there really is nothing stronger than community. And a true commitment to community and Dominique De Prima, I want to thank you for the commitment that you have demonstrated for so many years. Thank um, you. Feeding the black community, feeding me. And thank you for what you're doing right now with KBLA. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thanks for all you do, Sharon. I'm just trying to be like you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, Dominique, will you have a great day? And we'll be talking to you again Thank soon. you for sticking around. If you Thank like you. the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm, which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.